but I found that people that are one market are more endeared to you, more entitled. They more work with you. They they're, they're more you know ah, right. locked in with you. Yeah. Two ways running business: lemonade stand and Amazon. The goal, <laughs> <laughs> right? This guy's the best, bro. <laughs> the goal for me is to be Amazon. Thank you for joining us on our family first life Tri State Serve the People podcast. We appreciate you tuning in, spending your time to develop and grow with us. Follow us, please, on all our social media platforms at Family First Life Tri State or FFL Tri State. We love you. Keep listening. And I hope this information is serving you across the country. All right, everybody. Thank you for jumping on with us for our training day podcast. We have a special guest in studio with me, flew in the country from. Houston, Texas, my man, Claude Perry, senior board member of FFL Winter Circle, crushing it, top producer, Hall of Fame producer, Hall of Fame agency, guy's a complete stud, and he's in studio with us today. We're excited. My man, Claude, how you doing, buddy? I'm blessed, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're blessed to have you, and um, you know, I'm glad that we got this on the calendar, got it scheduled, and got you out here. Um, it's been an honor having you in today. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling great. I'm glad I came. It's well overdue. I think this yeah. is this is a must. I think I'll do it once a month now. <laughs> We'd love to have you, man. <laughs> a constant guest, but a new guest on our show. And uh, I want to comb through a lot of things with you. First off, how long have you been in the business? How long have you been with Family First Life? So I've been licensed for maybe five, six years. FFL, three and a half years. Okay. So three and a half years. I remember... Vegas annual convention. It was like late. It was like 11 p.m., maybe even midnight. <laughs> and you and I are walking the, what was that hotel? That, uh, Caesars Palace. Yeah, yeah. And we're just talking about life and situations. And that was a long time. That felt like that was probably three years ago. That was three years ago. First convention. First, That was your first convention? My first one. Okay. What is the difference for you at that time? You're trying to comb through stuff, figure stuff out, and grow to now. Now you have this this massive agency, and you're still trying to grow. But what's, what are some of the differences that you see today? A lot. Off the rip, I believe that um, there's two ways to run a business. Lemonade stand and Amazon. The goal, <laughs> <laughs> right? This guy's the best, bro. <laughs> the goal for me is to be Amazon. And I think from keeping it 100, it was more so lemonade stand prior. I just sold insurance, recruit people move how I move, now and get more intentional and organized is a big deal. Love it. So that's a massive statement. I mean, first off, there's a, there's a, there's a the Grand Canyon cuts right through the lemonade stand <laughs> in Amazon. <laughs> so can you walk us through <laughs> your mindset on Amazon or the concept behind building a business? Facts. So the concept I see in building a business, is it self-sustaining, right? If I were removed from it, would it run still? Mm. So with lemonade stand, I was making lemonade, selling lemonade, tasting lemonade. I was selling, I was recruiting, trying to figure out contracting. Now it's a spot where you're trying to get better at working on your business, far as staffing, far as systems that keep it running without me having to turn the knob. Love it. Love it. Walk us down your journey a little bit to FFL and where you are today. Yeah, so when I um so when I first got here, kinda piggyback off my first year, I was so hungry. Mm-hmm. I still am, but I literally was hungry like food, not in the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. So like <laughs> so when I got started, it was about just not being broke. It was literally from Sung Insurance Power Company for a couple of years, did good, took a long break, and then coming back, it was like when I seen FFL the comp was so high, they had leads. I felt that like it was a given I should win. Mm-hmm. I didn't need no money to like too much motivate me or make me dial. So I was just hungry, man. Like I knew that I had a a um not a learning curve. Well, yeah, learning curve, but more so of like a growth curve where I had mm-hmm. to be a better person, mm-hmm. be a more um diligent, be more um responsible mm-hmm. to have more. Right. So it took me doing more work on myself, to be honest. It took me more so cutting out things, right? Mm-hmm. Becoming the becoming the kind of person I would recruit. Mm-hmm. So for me, man, I just wanted to just sold a lot. You know, I'm being honest. Like I didn't like know too much back then. 
I just knew that if I sell a policy, I could pay it the next day. And if I recruit you, you sell a policy, I could pay it the next day. <laughs> and if I, and if I, but as I, it, it probably changed more than me getting paid when I hired Sue Hill. He hired Alondra and Josh. And I watched the business model change from us just hustling and bustling mm. to numbers stacking up. Yes. And I seen the power in serving people, the power in mentoring, the power in adding value. And I had folks asking for help, and I didn't fully know how to help myself. Mm. So it took me doing more work myself, habits, rituals, become more strong mentally to help them more externally, I believe. Mm. That's strong. Um, I love it, man. You know, life's a journey. You know, we're trying to figure things out as we go. Yeah. We're trying to grow mentally. We're trying to make less mistakes. We're trying to, you know, you know, cut the, the time down from one spot to the next spot. We're trying to also educate people around us to do the same thing. I mean, there's all kinds of things on this journey called life, but then you add in business and it takes on a different meaning. And you're walking through that, right? You're literally walking through that, you know? Top producer, killed it in the field, or killing it in the field still. Talk us to us a little bit about duplicating top producers, like helping other people go out there and help 30, 40 families a month. Facts. So for one, like, when the why is clear and the how shows itself. So once I got focused on why I want to help people, why I want to build a team, it started happening by itself. Mm -hmm. Again, when I hired Sue Hill or recruited Sue Hill, it changed because I never had someone around me. That, I never had someone around me that was so coachable, mm. which means he was hungry for information. He literally was asking questions. So he would show up to my house, two hours drive every day to dial, every day we did, every day that, that we did dial, mm -hmm. and we would go to Richmond, California, which is not a sunny side white picket fence area. Mm -hmm. It was a very rough area, mm. and he would be with me door knocking in trenches, <laughs> and um, he didn't flinch though. Yeah. He he didn't flinch, and 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 I, and I seen how his life changed from being a panic press employee, um, his sister at Target and Sam seventeen to them all getting licensed and their life elevating. Man, from being in an apartment with their family to buying property to moving to a different city to going to different states. So I got a different kind of feeling about it after them. Wow, you know, and then hired a laundry and Josh, and um, I mean they're rock stars, and they had a process too. You know, working at BJ's and being at a prior company, just learning, you know, this business. And then once they figured it out, you know, they basically just fast tracked it. Yeah. But um, for me, when I got clear that you only get more from helping more, mm. there's no other way to do it. Mm. Like you literally cannot have more, ain't no self-made millionaire. You no. have to build other people. The worst is be a fisher of men. So for me, I knew that, you know, if I could just figure out how to one, be the best I can be, mm -hmm. get my habits going and model that, the right people are gonna figure it out with me. No doubt. And you know, you mentioned Josh and Alondra, they, they, they killed it. I mean, they did duplicate systems. They did duplicate work ethic. They sold a ton of life insurance. You yeah. watched it. Then they built their business and, and became integrity partners. So it's, it's gotta be unbelievable for you to watch that, see that as part of your lineage and as a beacon to everyone else in, in the winner's circle that, hey, this could be you too. How does that, how does that feel? Team. You know, team is a big word for it because, you know, I remember when we first started, we all were in Telegram and we'd all sell, post our sales, ask questions. But even from the start when Alondra wasn't selling, you know, 100 families a month, mm -hmm. she was always answering questions in the group, asking feedback, asking questions, doing all the right things, calling when she was in the home, texting when she was in the home. She was following the recipe. So for me, it knew, it gave our team culture. Mm. It gave our team some momentum That's to awesome. have, let's build something together. No doubt. That's always the best. I mean, every time I every time I smile or laugh the hardest, I think about the early days. Yeah. The early days are when you're scrappy. <laughs> you're trying to you're throwing everything against the wall. Yeah. You know, and you're 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 literally looking for three, four, five people that are willing to wake up as early as you, that are willing to go to sleep as late as you, that are willing to dial as long as you, that are willing to show up on the office on time and get the things done, recruit a team and go out and help families. And those are the best times. Yeah. But somehow, it's it does it doesn't seem easy to keep the mind there. You know, in scrap mode, especially here at FFL, people become successful here. It's actually you see the success. You see yeah. them go from 
wherever they were from, from from living on in the apartment to the penthouse, if you will. Or you see people go from wherever they started to a new place in life. You s visually see it. You see them go from low business acumen to higher business acumen. And it's hard to keep that scrappiness throughout at times. So I've seen. What is your take on that? Well, they call it staying dangerous where I'm from. You got to stay dangerous, right? Mm. But I also believe that as you elevate, your mindset changes. Look at Jay-Z, look at Eminem, right? Their rap songs were different in the good old days to where they're at now. Right. So I do believe that evolution is key. It happens naturally by osmosis. I don't think you can I don't think you can hold them to the same scrappiness, right? Mm. From 95 to 2020, <laughs> it'd be nice, but you can't, right? Right, 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 right. So right. I think <laughs> at some point you have to evolve, but I do believe that you have to reinvent yourself. Yes. And I believe you constantly becoming a student, mm. learning. You know, for me, I learned years ago, work myself hard at my job. That's the only way I feel um, fulfilled is that if I'm constantly pulling back more layers and being the best person I can be, mm. the best person. Because really, you know, I'm, I'm flawed, I'm a flawed man. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about how can I stay dangerous, stay hungry, um, and don't run from adversity. Right. You know, so to answer your question, how stay scrappy, I think stay dangerous. I think every day do something that, that you don't want to do mm -hmm. and help people that may not help you. Mm -hmm. But when you put your heart in the servant spot, like you taught me, being a servant leader, that brings a different kind of alma out of you. Mm. If that's me. Makes sense. Um, as you, but you, you mentioned something that I, I, I hold near and dear to my heart. And I've done plenty times. You said you have to reinvent yourself, you know, and that is a major key <laughs> in life, in business, as a parent, you have to reinvent yourself. You're not parenting your kids the same way at four that you do at eight, at eight as you do as 12, at 12 as you do as 16, at 16 as you do as 20. Yeah. You're not a different person, but you ha your strategies are different. You have to... You have to you have to evolve. You have to evolve with what's actually happening, what's actually going on around you. Yeah. You know, we've evolved quite a bit. You know, through the pandemic and everything else. What are some things you've done to adapt, evolve, and reinvent yourself throughout the years? Um, for me, you know, a lot off the top of my head, I believe that um, my relationship with God made me respond to things differently, and I believe that the way you respond to something is like a taking a freeway exit. If you, if I have a habit, like where I grew up at, still my shoes were fighting. I couldn't carry that on my whole life. Mm -hmm. So as I evolved, I started handling things with grace mm -hmm. and empathy. So for me, one is my creator, um, being more humble, right? And um, being more selfless, less me, more him, which is a daily task because I really like myself. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to fight still. <laughs> I, I, I really want to hunk and, and, and stay on the horn and look at him like, what's up? <laughs> you know, I'm being honest. But, but then I, I cup by going, I, I'm a father of two, two boys. Mm -hmm. How do I want them to, what kind of man do I, do I, do I what kind of man would I want them to be? Hmm. The kind of man that lays on a horn and mugs somebody? Or God goes, hey, you can go ahead. It's all good. Have a good day. Yeah. That way. Yeah. So, I believe that for me, it was really one let your God is key. Yeah, praise God. And really just keep stretching. You have to not be the biggest dog in the kennel. Mm. That's why trips like this for me are so much, much needed because to get in front of you and see how you interact with your staff, the camaraderie, the rapport, the system, the organization is a very big deal because now I can model that. Mm. So you have to be uncomfortable enough to get out the kennel, get around, get around some bigger dogs, you know. <laughs> and then third, I'm staying dangerous. I believe that from me doing Muay Thai sparring weekly, to me um, working out, to me running, cause I hate running, doing things I don't like makes me, I believe, have an edge. Mm. So when things happen, I don't flinch. Mm. I'm getting better at it, you know, but it's something to say for how you face adversity. You know, I learned from a coach a while back to always write down and begin the day. When your day goes left, how are you going to respond? So I want to always make sure I'm prepared for adversity. So faith, getting around some bigger dogs, 
doing things that are hard daily. I love it, man. That's 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 a mouthful. It um, is. My bad. No, it's great, <laughs> man. This is this is very informative and very educational. We we um we need this, you know, in the booth training day with my man Claude Perry. Um, Claude, <clears throat> you have a business that is growing. You have a business that is you're helping two thousand plus families a month. What is the next level for you? So, and just be very clear, like I'm only where I'm at because I'm standing on sh- I'm standing on shorter people that are greater than me. So what you see from the Warren Circle is a reflection of the team. A lot of people help a lot of families that have got serious about activity versus talking. Um, so for me, next level, honestly, build more leaders. Or if that can be built, I believe it can be. I'm actually, you know, you probably better tell me if you can build it or not. But next level for me is honestly help more folks that are in a bad position with a license because there are so many agents I talk to they either have insurance license that are underpaid and overworked mm-hmm. or they're working a job and they have no license. So for me, the next level is constantly find the next person that wants the next win. Find that next person looking for an opportunity because I would have, I mean, I was looking for an opportunity like this. Mm-hmm. And um, I believe there's so many people that are looking for one. They're just in other positions. So for me, I'm trying to stay, um, I'm getting better at staying more aware of who I'm around because that waitress, um, that bartender, that hotel, you know, person, you know, works the front desk. In a lot of cases, they would be a rock star if they can get licensed. No, no. So I'm getting better yes, at being more aware, staying mm. dangerous. Love it. You like that. You de- <laughs> We're going to call you Claw Dangerously soon. <laughs> um, talk to us about the power of warm market and why you think that can be the ticket for the winner's circle over the next 12 to 18 months? I think that is the best recruiting model um, because ultimately I believe that when you have a coat marker recruit is not bad. Mm-hmm. You don't know them. They're an ad. They're only endeared to you so much. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for a reason to talk to him versus you in most mm-hmm. cases. Mm-hmm. Warm market usually has some kind of connection to you or somebody you know. Right. And the trust factor is there. So usually if you spend time with them, they will to say run through walls for you. I mean it's kind of dramatic. But I found that people that are one market are more endeared to you, more entitled. They more yeah. work with you. They they're more, you know, ah right. locked in with you. Yeah, correct. First to recruit that guy from an ad in Southside Wisconsin <laughs> he may be here today, going tomorrow. <laughs> but when I look at, <laughs> hey, shout out to Wisconsin Southside. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and um, right, like, and if I look back at my business, man, everybody that um were the tightest with, they were warm market. So it's kind of recipe. The cake, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. It's amazing. I don't know if we got away from the concept. I don't think we ever went, you know, if we ever screamed about it and went ham, ham, ham. I think it was a concept. Most of these big businesses are built through Walmart. Do you think it's as simple as putting people on a list and calling them? Yes, I do. Yes. Yes, 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 and yes. Yes, and yes, and yes, and yes again. I had a buddy of mine who I've known for years from MLM. Okay. 14 years. He texts me the other day. He goes, is this Mark Sell? Is this still Mark Sell? I go, yes, sir. And then he goes, great, man. I was scrolling through my phone looking for a couple of people, and I came across your number. Now, he's into something. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to get me into something. <laughs> okay? The cool part is, is I reached out to him and knew that. Yeah. Right? And then he starts you know, gorilla pitching me <laughs> <laughs> on this on this thing. I don't even know what it is, to be honest. And the only reason why I tell this story is because if he wasn't Warren Market, I would have never even responded to the text. Thanks. I would have never, we would have never spoke. I wasn't, you know, whatever. I'm just, I'm doing killing over here, doing my thing. But I'm just like, if he wasn't Warren Market, I never even would have responded to the text message. And it's like, the warm warm market creates such familiarity with the ability to to gel and have trust levels that I don't know how you could build this business without it. 
And I agree. And I think it's it's probably fair to define one market is not just family and friends. It's the guy at Starbucks, the guy at the hotel, yes, the waitress you sing. No doubt. It's the ability to share what you have your hands on. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you a question. Why don't you think people use one market to recruit? I think people don't want to get rejected from their friends and family. That's what I think. And their associates and people and the waiter and the this. And they don't want to put themselves out there. Now, a family for his life, it's, you know, it's funny. At some of these other companies that do it rampant, you have to do it because the comp's so low that if you don't do it, you can't make money. Facts. Here, you don't have to do it because the comp's so high. It's, yeah. it's rever- we should not be running it this way. We should be. We have comp higher. We yeah. should be going. We should be going out to every bartender and every server and every, you know, hotel front desk man. Like because the comp's so high that they can do well. Yeah. So it's it's the reverse that needs to get reversed, and we're we're working on that right now. But I see the concept of what can happen with a warm market machine, and how people can, you know, it's glue. It's like hot glue. It's sticky. And people know that they know that they know that this person is here for me, not against me, and they want to help me out. And I'm able to take tutelage and listen to some of the things that they suggest. Yeah. As opposed to cold market where it's almost like, don't touch me. Don't touch me with that. Miss me with that. Yeah. You know, because they don't know. They don't know that they don't know. And they don't really know you. And they, they're hoping that half the stuff you're saying is true. And they, and they yeah. have an easier tap out level. And I, both work. So don't get it twisted. Both do work. But the biggest businesses of a family first life have warm market roots. Yeah. So, And if I'm honest, you know, as a <clears throat> leader, I have to get better at training on warm market because I personally got away from it because that's how I was brought in, you know, recruiting warm market. That's mm-hmm. how, you know, the Sahil of the world and people were hired because we're a market. Mm-hmm. We had a certain dialect, a certain script, a certain mm-hmm. order of operation. What I can do better in my circle is creating an event, um, an event around hiring, an event around a BDM mm-hmm. versus coming just looking at a business. You're coming to an event because I was in Emily prior and I did good at it. Mm-hmm. And if I'm honest, the business presentations were an event. They're an event, music, activity, all things that we may poo-poo about, mm-hmm. but it works. Not only does it work, dude, I'm not recruiting you to sell juice. Facts. <laughs> I'm not recruiting you to sell, you know, Band-Aids. Yeah. We're helping families with life insurance with the highest comp in the industry. Uh, music. I mean, we should have better music. <laughs> we should have louder music. <laughs> we should have more snacks. You know what I'm saying? We smoker, have, smoker, smoker. You know what I'm saying? Training. I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's actually good stuff. You know, that stuff's not the problem. Make sense? Yeah. It's recruiting to an inferior model versus recruiting to a superior model. If we can recruit to a superior model, why wouldn't we do it at ridiculous scale? That's what matters. Because people still like listening to music. People still like snacks. People still like smoke. <laughs> I ain't, none of that was ever the problem. Yeah. None of that was ever the enemy. This, this, All that stuff is good stuff. So let's do it at a hyperscale. We're going ham. Winter Circle's going ham. So I'm excited about what's ahead. If you can give a parting shot to somebody, a new agent, someone who wants to build a big business, Parting shot. Say it a different way for me. What's if you could, if you could impart something, wisdom to someone right now that's listening, I like the way you asked that. Yeah, yeah. I love the way you asked that. What would you say to somebody? So first thing I would say, figure out what you want, because if you don't have a clear defined goal, you can't hit a goal. So I would clear define on paper what do I want, and I would make sure people around me that I'm depending on have been there or going that direction. And if you get started here. Don't underestimate training and activity because if you're not confident on the phone, the only way you can gain confidence is by calling. If you're not sure how to sell a policy, you have to sell a policy to get sure. You know, Wetmore says you can't run on a flight airplane without flying an airplane. <laughs> right? So I would just encourage you if you're looking at this business where you just started, like, one, be very clear on what you want and write it down. You know, where the focus goes, the energy flows. So I will focus on what I want exactly, and I will figure out what can I cut out my life. And chances are some things you want to cut out your life are going to be the hardest things you can do your whole life. But for me, I cut things out, 
cut people out, and then I had room for more things. So I figure out what I want, yep, cut things out, train, and like he said earlier, don't be the person that worry about family and friends or partners or girlfriends or boyfriends saying it's bad. I think you have to go to that dark period that Tim Grover, you know, um, called it, you know, your dark side, where you cut everybody else out, focus on you. Put your mask on first and just know that if you're okay, the kids will be fine. If you're mm. okay, she'll be fine. But you got to take care of you first. Mm. I love it, man. Dropping gems as you do. Appreciate Thank you coming you. in the booth with me. Big stuff coming from FL Tri State. Big stuff coming from our Training Day podcast. Keep listening. We appreciate you. We want to bring you value. God bless.